Hello and welcome to Absolute Trust Talk. Um, this is another Facebook Live version of our podcast here at Absolute Trust Council, and I'm Kirsten Howe, your host. Today, my guest is Russell Doy, a specialist in reverse mortgages with a Mutual of Omaha Mortgage. I'm going to introduce him officially in just a few minutes, but I just want to let you know what we'll be talking about so you can get excited about it as I am. Um, Reverse mortgage is a financial planning tool that got a little bit of a bad reputation a number of years ago and, and perhaps right deservedly so. Um, the, but the industry and the products themselves have changed significantly. And we are seeing in our practice more and more of our clients using this tool and taking advantage of it um, in their financial planning. and. Um, finding that it really can be a great solution to a lot of things that people are are um, dealing with. So we're going to be talking about the reverse mortgages, the improvements that have been made, how it works, how how the sausage gets made, and um, and some of the reasons that people do reverse mortgages. And some of them might be uh, surprising to you, You're not what you would have expected. So that's what we're going to cover today. Um, now, as those of you who are regular listeners know, uh, we got to do a little housekeeping before we get started. So two things. Number one, we are recording this, and that means that if you want to watch it again after this is over, or you have a friend who you think would like to watch it, it will be a video on our website, absolutetrustcouncil.com, in a few days. Just give us a few days. We'll put it up there. And we also take the audio portion of this recording and turn it into a podcast. So that will also be on our website, absolutetrustcouncil.com, but it will also be on the podcast platform. So wherever you normally go to listen to podcasts, you can find it there again in a few days. It takes us a little bit of time to get it all up there. Um, the second housekeeping item is we always take questions at the end. So if you're watching live, go ahead and type in a question into the comment area there on Facebook. And at the end of our conversation, I will ask those questions and give Russell an opportunity to answer them. So you can type the question in at any time. We'll answer them at the end. Um, and if you're not watching live, sorry, no questions for you. <laughs> Better luck next time. Okay. So, now, um, my guest, Russell Doy, has over 30 years in the in the uh, lending industry. Um, that's an interesting, over 30. That's what I say, too. You have been a lawyer for over 30 years because at some point you got to stop telling the real number, right? <laughs> anyway, he has over 30 years of experience in the lending industry covering the whole spectrum of lending from private money loans to commercial Loan, conventional loans and reverse mortgage loans is now his focus. And he has been focused on FHA and reverse mortgages for the last eight years. And as I said, he works for Mutual of Omaha Mortgage, which is one of the leaders in the reverse mortgage um, industry. And as we will discuss, for those of you who don't already know this, reverse mortgages are designed for seniors primarily. And Russell's passion for helping seniors actually carries over into his off time. Um, for the last 10 years, he has volunteered at a senior center here in the East Bay um, that that provides hot lunches to seniors. It does fitness classes. It um, has case management services, cultural enrichment, and he has served on their board of directors for six years. So his his commitment to seniors, helping seniors is is pretty um, serious. He also organizes work parties to assist seniors uh, around their home with, you know, things like decluttering, yard work, mm -hmm. minor home repairs. Um, so you you see that he really is a good guy and he cares about our seniors. Um, so um, Russell is also a Bay Area native born in Berkeley, raised in El Cerrito. He's a, an alum of Cal State East Bay. He's 
a, a local guy. And we are just so very fortunate to have a few minutes of his time here today. Welcome, Russell. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Kirsten. Um, it's a pleasure being here. And um, it sounded like a long bio. So now you guys know all about my life. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, well, I'm sure there are a few things that I left out, but <laughs> <I'll help you. laughs> they can find out on their own. Um, right. Let's let's just get started then um, with the most basic of basic questions, because that's how I like to go. Um, what is a reverse mortgage? So a uh, reverse mortgage, uh, it's a type of mortgage that allows uh, senior homeowners uh, to convert a portion of their home equity into tax free usable cash and it requires no monthly mortgage payments. Um, the, the loan balance is paid back when the borrower either moves or passes away or when the home is sold. And the requirements to keep this loan in place are uh, the home has to be a primary residence, uh, has to be owner occupied and maintained, and the property taxes, insurance, and homeowner's dues, if any, uh, must be paid on time. And uh, the borrower uh, uh, to a, of a reverse mortgage uh, does not ever lose or share ownership uh, to their homes uh, with any particular lender. Um, really, a reverse mortgage is geared towards homeowners who want to continue to live in their homes long term. Okay, so it basically, I think if I'm understanding you correctly, it mm -hmm. allows people to use the home equity that they have built up over the years by virtue of just so, sometimes just owning a home for a long time and it goes up in value to turn some of that equity into actual dollars that they can spend. That's correct. Okay. So what are the reasons, what are some of the reasons that you see people wanting to do this? Um, several reasons uh, or, Everybody is different. Um, sure. Now you can you can use the money from a reverse for any purpose, uh, but I've got clients. Uh, I have a, a few clients who, for instance, wanted to pay off their current conventional mortgage, and um, because they were able to do that, immediately improve their cash flow because they no longer have to make monthly mortgage payments. Um, okay, so the mortgage payment just goes away if you. It goes away you pay it off because a reverse mortgage does not have uh, a required monthly mortgage payments. Um, it will eliminate uh, the need to have to come up with that every single month. Got it. Okay. Um, I can imagine that that, that is a desirable thing, especially if you're, you know, when we retire, now we don't have the ability to go out and earn more money. <laughs> right. We might be living on social security and our investments. So things are more fixed. So right. it's kind of nice to get rid of that, that monthly check that you've been writing to the, to the lender. Yeah. That's right. So that's one example. Other examples are uh, some maybe need to have some in-home care and uh, they may not have the means to be able to pay for it. So having this extra resource allows them to go ahead and pay what is very, very expensive. I think the average cost is sometimes between $27 to $40 an hour, uh, depending on the type of, of care they need. And that can yeah. eat uh, very quickly into somebody's life savings. Yeah. So having this extra resource really helps cover uh, and allows them to, to pay for that in-home care. Sure, yeah. And, and you know, we see this all the time. Clients really want to stay in their homes. Yes. Even if they, if they need care, they need help, they would much rather be able to pay for that care to come to them rather than move into some kind of a assisted living situation most people most of my yeah. clients they they want to live in their home to the end so this is a nice um tool to help them do that okay. yeah most of my clients i i ask them the same thing and the preference is to continue to remain in their home long term yeah. 
Yeah, which is understandable. I mean, that's yeah. what I would like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Myself as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my house. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't like climbing up all those stairs to get to my house. I'll tell That's you. Right. <laughs> well, that actually brings up another thing. If somebody wants to stay in their home and they do have stairs, they may need to have funds to remodel that home. Oh, yeah. uh, may, maybe they need um, uh, uh, these stair lifts or chair lifts uh, to, to use for uh, that sort of situation. Or maybe they want to have um, grab bars uh, so that they can kind of stabilize themselves. Um, or any walk-in tubs or things that will really help them stay in their home long term, and so that takes that costs money, obviously. So right. a reverse mortgage helps pay for those kinds of things. Um, again, you can use the money to 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 use it for any any particular any purpose that you want, really. Yeah, it's it's your money. You can use it however you want. Yeah, and um, and a lot of people. Yeah, I know a lot of my clients. They do use it for various reasons that allow them to stay in their homes and right and it's a well, that's a really nice thing one thing that um people uh most people don't realize is that you can actually use a reverse mortgage to purchase a home too yeah in the beginning when i said there are some reasons that might surprise you that's one of them yeah i think that's fascinating yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that sure so uh, typically somebody is selling their current residence because they want to move or downsize somewhere else. And so instead of having to pay all cash and use up all of their um, reserves, they can put 50% down on the next house and finance the remaining 50% with a reverse mortgage. And guess what? In the end, they do not have to make mortgage payments. So cash flow is intact. And that 50% they haven't had to cover is now money they can use for retirement. Right. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that. So yeah. you can you can downsize without putting and get rid of your mortgage if you had one and not put any more cash into a house. That's right. You already have. Yeah. That's right. Nice. That's so nice. um I, I think people really the, the biggest thing about uh, why they want a reverse mortgage is that there's um, either concerns about being able to pay for their everyday expenses. Uh, maybe they're anticipating an increase in expenses in the future. And so it really provides, um, it could be even a backup uh, liquid asset uh, to cover uh, and to give people peace of mind knowing that they're gonna have enough funds in retirement. So. Right. It's a really nice extra resource to to have. So what what exactly are the the qualification requirements for a reverse mortgage? Um, pretty simple. Um, it has to be a uh, primary residence, uh, owner occupied, and um, you have to be at least sixty two years of age for the FHA version of reverse mortgage. Now there is a proprietary style. Uh, of uh, reverse mortgage called a jumbo loan. And uh, the youngest age to qualify for that is 60 years old. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. And if there's a husband and wife, then just one of uh, those borrowers has to be at least 60 or 60 to, uh, 62, depending on the program. So, um, so one could be 62 and one could be 40? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's a good that's deal. Right. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Um, if you can get a 40 year old to <laughs> marry you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, you said it, I didn't. I know. Um, that was yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, uh, you, you, they, there is, uh, we run a credit report. So there are some minimal credit uh, requirements. Um, there are also some minimal income requirements. Uh, the bottom line is it's much easier to qualify for a reverse mortgage um, than it is for a conventional loan which I used to do for 20 something years. The um, the financial underwriting is a lot cleaner, simpler, I guess, because they aren't, they aren't expecting you to make mortgage payments. So right. They don't really need to know, you know, how much are you making at your job? You don't That's have right. to have a job. You just, <laughs> right. That makes I sense. Would, 
I would say 95% of my clients um, are not working and right. really they only have social security income coming in. Uh, most don't have pensions anymore. And so uh, even with just social security, typically uh, you could still qualify for a reverse mortgage. Yeah, you, the, the income threshold is not very high. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I, I get that because again, they don't expect you to make a mortgage payment. Yeah. Okay. So they, they do. They do. I'm sorry to interrupt, but they no do problem. require that you have the ability to pay your property taxes, insurance, and homeowners dues, if any, long term. So that's really what they're looking for: is the borrower's um, capacity to be able to handle paying taxes, insurance, uh, and homeowners dues uh, long term. That's yeah. really what they're looking for. Right. Right. Okay. Um, now, I think there in the past there have been, or currently probably a lot of a lot of misconceptions about what reverse mortgage is and what it isn't. And one of them being um, the the lender is going to own my house right. if I if I sign this document, and I I don't want that. Can you yeah, that, talk about that? Yeah, that seems to be um, one of the biggest um, concerns that comes up and misconceptions really. Um, the lender uh, does not um, own title to the home. The lender doesn't share um, equity in the home. Um, and the lender doesn't get the home if the borrower uh, passes away necessarily. Um, uh, title just remains in the name of the borrower or borrowers. And if it's in a trust, by the way, uh, we keep the title in the trust. We don't have to take it out. And so they don't have to worry about uh, losing uh, that benefit. Um, and the borrower can sell or refinance at any time. Really what happens in the end is that the lender just receives the amount of money that was been borrowed uh, plus the accrued interest um, at that time. So whatever the loan balance is gets paid off and the rest of it gets um, the profit uh, goes to the borrower or the the family. Um, yeah. family uh, right. or the estate. Right. So it's not unlike a conventional mortgage. You know, when the property gets sold, the mortgage gets paid off. It's just the That's same right. thing. Yeah. It's exactly the, the bank never owns it. They just are standing there waiting to be paid. That's right. Yeah. Same. And there's no prepayment penalty. Um, so oh. it's just simply the bank or lender or loan servicing company just receives the amount owed at that time. Got it. Okay. Yep. Um, now, can you talk, Russell, just a little bit about the different ways that people can take their reverse mortgage money? Sure. Um, so the most popular way is uh, a line of credit because there's a lot more flexibility with that. Um, so what's nice is that with a line of credit, uh, the interest only accrues on what has been drawn out. Uh, so if you have a line of credit of 300,000, for instance, and you only draw out $10,000, the interest just accrues on that $10,000, not the whole amount. Oh, um, okay. and, so it's uh, very flexible. It's, it's very flexible. It's, it's almost like a um, big credit card. <laughs> well, you know, how with the, the big credit card, a, a credit card, you can, draw out money, but you can pay back if you want to. Uh, right. In this case, you don't have to pay it but back. But you don't have to pay it back, right? Yeah, so that's that's the big difference between the two. Yeah, um, you don't even have to pay the minimum monthly <laughs> right. thing that the credit card company wants. Yeah, nothing. Right. Now, there yeah. is a huge um, benefit that's tied into a reverse line of credit that you don't have with a conventional line of credit or a bank line of credit in that any unused um, portion of that line of credit limit will grow by the going interest rate plus mortgage insurance rate, which happens to be 0.5% right now. Um, so if you take a line of credit out now, then maybe in 10 years, um, the line of credit limit now has grown significantly, maybe even doubled, depending on what the interest rates do. Oh, okay, so it's your huge. your line of credit, in other words, the amount of money that's available to you increases over time. You don't have to go refinance it to get more money out. Yeah. That's, it's just, that's right. It's part, it's a feature of that, that tool. Oh, it's, okay. it's built in and it's guaranteed. Uh, FHA guarantees that it will always increase 
it will never decrease. Never decrease. Okay. Yeah. In fact, the line of credit itself can never be reduced, frozen, or canceled, unlike maybe a bank uh, line of credit. So even if real estate were to take a dive, the line of credit will stay intact, including the growth that's built into it. Yeah, that's that. The risk of that is on the lender um, that's slash right. the insurer. <laughs> that's right. That's right. right. Exactly um, right. Okay. And um, oh, other I, ways. To, other ahead. ways to take it is um, uh, monthly payments or a lump sum or a combination of all of that, depending on the the uh, needs of the borrower. Okay. So that's kind of. Um, when when you're meeting with the borrower and trying to set this up for them you you go you work with them to figure out which way is going to work best you, that's is right going to be a line of credit should we do a lump sum you know what's best for the borrower and you that's can right. you can structure it however it works best for them yeah i mean it, it, the conversation they have oftentimes takes quite a, a bit of time because everybody's needs are different Right. So, yes, yeah, so we have to structure it in the way that best fits those needs. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, before I turn it over to questions, and, and I should do that in a minute. Sure. Let me just ask you, generally, I'm, I'm sure you must have some kind of rule of thumb, or maybe you know that there's an absolute answer. How much is available to borrowers? It's a good question. So uh, HUD has a formula. Uh, that all lenders use. And in the formula, um, the amount of the maximum loan is determined by one's age. And the older you are, the more they lend. Uh, also, uh, current interest rate, the lower the interest rate, the more they lend. And how much home is worth. So the greater the value, obviously, then the more they'll lend. Uh, FHA roughly Loan amount right now is typically in the three to four fifty range, four hundred fifty thousand range. Uh, the proprietary or the jumbo type loans can go up to fifty percent of the total value, uh, as high as four million dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, it's quite wow. extensive. I, I did a loan for somebody in the Bay Area. Their house was worth two point three million, and we were able to lend over a million dollars. We took that money and paid off. A balance of six hundred thousand, where he was paying out every month three thousand dollars a month, um, and we gave him an additional four hundred thousand. Yeah. To put That's towards his retirement. Whatever he needs. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's. So, so that worked out great. Okay. That's. Yeah. That's fascinating. But it on the um, the conven or what's the opposite of jumbo? Just the FHA. FHA home equity okay. conversion. Mortgage, I want to use the right terminology. Okay. <laughs> So on the FHA, you were talking about a dollar, usually 350, maybe 400. Is it is there a percentage of the total equity that you can't, they won't go above? Well, there are limits. And so right now they just raised the limits to 822,375. Um, but that's kind of like, I would look at that as the uh, value of the home, the max value of the home. Um, so they start with that, and then oh, they I take see. consideration those other elements, the age, the current interest rate, and um, how much equity is left in the home. Okay. Um, and so then that formula will will kind of spit out uh, the maximum loan. And that maximum loan for FHA typically, like I said, is between $300,000 to $450,000. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. Well, so that's good to know. Um, all right. Now, we do have some... Uh, people asking questions. So let me oh, great. Um, look in here and see what we have. Um, okay, so one of the questions I have, um, does credit score affect eligibility for a reverse mortgage? I think you talked about that a little bit, but maybe you can give us a little more on that. Yeah, yeah credit score is not used as one of the qualifying factors um, but credit a credit report will be run and uh, if there are any credit lates or derogatory accounts then we just have to have an explanation letter um, and um, that usually is enough to to satisfy the lender okay okay so they're not looking for a 750 <laughs> that it's not so much that it's more it's like, not predicated on score at all yeah do you yeah. have do you have problems on there? 
Unless that's right. I know right. what they are. Okay. That's right. Okay. And um, I think kind of related to that question is the question of if you have a reverse mortgage, who is paying for the taxes, insurance, those kinds of things? The that's borrower the is still... Mm -hmm. Right. So you still have to, um, you, you're not completely free uh, housing. Right. Right. <laughs> so expensive. you still are responsible for yeah. paying uh, property taxes, your homeowner's insurance, and if it's a condo or PUD, then your homeowner's dues you as well. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, and here's another question that's maybe related to that, and it might be a little... Um, exciting of a question. I don't know. Um, I'm guessing as a lender, generally, you you want the borrower to maintain the property. Um, you don't right. want them to let it rot and, you know, a hole in the roof and everything's ruined. Sure. Is there, is there any um, ongoing requirements with respect to that? Yeah, so the, the lender does re, um, require that you maintain the home. Um, sure. And so if, for instance, the roof goes leaky, they want to make sure you patch it up. Uh, if um, there's any sort of health and safety issues going on, they just want to make sure that the the borrower is safe um, mm -hmm. for, from any of those kinds of hazards. Um, do they send somebody out to inspect? They can, um, but I haven't found that any of my uh, lenders have done that so far. So maybe yeah. in the future they will, but for up to now, they haven't really um, yeah. sent anybody out to knock on the door uh, to check. <laughs> I mean, the home itself is the collateral for the loan, just like on a conventional loan, right. the home right. is the collateral for the reverse mortgage. You sign right. a deed of trust, you sign a note, it's, it's the same in terms of, um, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. So you can imagine why the lender, That's they, right. care, they, care, they care about the, the state of it. Um, but it, it sounds like they haven't experienced too many bad situations such that they feel they have to go out and inspect it every time. So that's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, I have one more question in here, which is, um, okay. Oh, can you talk about the costs and fees? involved in a reverse mortgage and also specifically are there additional fees or costs after the deal is completed and in place okay um the cost once the deal is in place is the interest that's accruing and what they call mortgage insurance as well um so mortgage insurance is um, really uh the insurance that uh, these lenders need uh, to cover any shortfall, for instance, if a home, and we didn't talk about this, if a home actually went upside down or the loan went upside down, meaning it's greater than the value of the home. Right. Uh, number one, the borrower can continue to live in the home indefinitely, but the borrower is also not liable for any shortfall. And so right. who pays for that shortfall? Uh, it comes from this pot that's created called mortgage insurance. So mortgage insurance is important to the lender, but also important to the borrower in order to cover that sort of shortfall. Right. Um, so that's a cost that's um, uh, put in place uh, that's ongoing. And there's some upfront uh, mortgage insurance that's required in the beginning. Uh, the rest of the costs are very typical to any other typical mortgage, um, whether it's FHA or conventional. Yeah, the, all the stuff that you, yeah. you see on that settlement statement when you buy a house. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But let me let me clarify something. The ongoing yes. costs, like the insurance, that's got to get paid every year. Yeah. Um, the mortgage insurance and um, the interest that is, you're not you're not actually paying that out of pocket. It's just right. part of what you are ultimately borrowing. I'm I'm glad you clarified that because yeah. you're not making mortgage payments. Uh, you're you're not a accruing that or you're not paying that interest you're accruing right. it so it, the way it gets paid off is when you ultimately sell the house right so, so or it, or if the yeah. family sells the house right. at that point then they get all of their interest plus mortgage insurance plus right. the amount that's been borrowed 
back. Okay. So once you sign yourself up for the reverse mortgage, these on, these ongoing costs that kind of keep the thing maintained and healthy, you don't see it. You're not writing a check for it. It's just part of what's happening. That's right. You yeah. see it on your monthly statement. So every right. month you're going to see what your balance is. Every month they'll also itemize how much is going coming from interest, how much is um, coming from mortgage insurance, and then you'll see the total amount added together. Okay. Yeah. And it's just a statement. It's not an invoice. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I get from Kaiser. This is not an invoice. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. We Thank have enough bills to pay <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, okay. Uh, thank you for answering those questions, um, oh, sure. Russell. And I, I want to let everybody know before I let you go, Russell, um, we didn't get to ask nearly as many questions as I would have liked because right. there's a lot to this and it's, it is complicated. Russell is an expert and he could answer, he could sit here all day and answer questions, I'm sure. Um, but I want to say is that um, he's two things. He has made available to us this um, frequently asked questions document that he has available. It's going to be available on our website because that's where the podcast is going to be. So if you want to, you'll get there are many more questions on here than I was able to ask him. So if you want a little bit more information, you can do that. Also, you can go to Russell's website, which is russelldoy.com. Mm -hmm. You can email him, rdoy at mutualmortgage.com, or you can call him 510-305-9476. Um, he is happy to talk to anybody. Um, he's very generous with his time. He'll talk to you as long as you need to understand, does this, is this something that might work for me? And he can even um, tell you exactly how much you would likely be able to qualify for just by talking to him. Um, he's just happy to educate and, and if educating you helps you, then he's very happy to do that. So don't hesitate to, um, to take him up on all of that. And all of that information that I just spit out at you um, will be on our website. So you can find it. Don't worry about it. Um, and I know Russell also does seminars and workshops on this um, subject. So if you want to find out when he's going to be doing a seminar, um, just go ahead and contact him directly. And um, I just want to thank you, Russell. This has been very, very informative and I really appreciate your time and your valuable expertise. Well, I, I want to thank you as well, Kirsten, and it's been a pleasure and I love educating people about this program um, because there's a lot still, even today, a lot of misconceptions about it. But I think once they um, take the time to educate themselves about the reverse mortgage today, they'll realize there's a lot of safeguards built in and it's really transformed over the last 10 years, especially. And so right. it's worth taking that time. And I'm willing to give you as much time as possible in a phone call um, and not charge you anything. Um, just just uh, call, get your questions answered and i um, happy to um, provide you any information you need about it. That's great. Thank you so much. I, I oh, you're welcome. really appreciate your time here today. And um, I will let you go. And thanks very much. Have a great okay. holiday. Same to you. Happy holidays to everyone. Take care. All right, everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here. I hope you got a lot out of that. I know I certainly did. Um, there's a whole lot to those reverse mortgages that I didn't understand before I started talking to Russell and um, I think that they can definitely help a lot of people. So um, go ahead, avail yourself of his generosity if it's something that you think might apply to you. And I just want to also remind you, um, we are here to help you with any estate planning need you might have, absolutetrustcouncil.com. You can set up an initial free consultation by going to our website and clicking the, the little button there. I also want to remind, um, listeners that we have 
been working a lot on this whole Prop 19 issue. So if you own real estate that you think maybe you would like your children to own someday, it, this might be something for you to um, check into and, and see if there's some planning you should be doing right now. Um, so you can go to absolutetrustcouncil.com slash Prop 19 and just read about that. Um, see if that applies to you. All right. Thank you for being here with me. I wish you all uh, happy holidays and stay safe.